show theme. So anyone who dressed up fancy, thank you so much. You look great. Um, <laughs> and, um, also, on an unrelated note, I got information over the break that apparently the Grandpa Beck, the Jeff Beck, used to be a member of this club. So if you have a question about that, come talk to one of the people who look older and members of this club. So, um, not me though, I'm young at heart. Um, Okay, I'm not going to talk for too much because we want to get started. Um, so keep up the energy out of that first half. You guys did amazing. In fact, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> As I call our players to the front. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been some breaking news. Oh, yes. Uh, we're gonna have to pause the show for a second, and we're actually gonna be having an emergency uh, press conference. Um, so uh, basically, someone has done something, and that someone is great. But he, he doesn't know who he is or what he's done. So uh, he's gonna be giving this press conference, trying to guess who he is and what he's done, and he's gonna be given hints by, we have some journalists uh, scattered among the audience, um, they're gonna be helping him out. But first off, I'm gonna turn this off. We need to figure out who Brayden is and what he's done. So I'm gonna go actually to this back half of the audience over here. Um, anyone back here, who is a real historical or contemporary character that you would love to see give a press conference? Kermit. 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 I don't know if this counts, but I think it does. I'm taking Kermit the Frog. <laughs> now, now, um, let's get this little section of the audience because my cousins are sitting right here. Give my cousins a round of applause. This section of the audience, what does Kermit do that is nothing related to the Muppets or the Jim Henson Company or anything like that? Okay, okay, someone said, someone said gutter ball, but I'm going to say he got a perfect game in bowling. <laughs> so this is the game of the press conference of Brayden is Kermit the Frog. Um, it's up to a perfect game in bowling. Um, so we're going to call him back in. So everyone call him back in with a call of breaking news. One, two, three. Breaking news! on a Thursday, am I right? <laughs> sir, sir, sir! I, we bumped into each other in the hall and I, maybe it was just me, or did, did we have a colorful connection? <laughs> uh, sir, sir, okay. sir, please, sir, is it easy? Maxine Weekly, what is your opinion about how life fracks through water droppings? <laughs> uh, like, do as it may, because light be like that. Do, do you guys see? <laughs> Next part. Wait, wait. Uh, CNN News. Uh, CNN News. Was it the many films that you've starred in that gave you the chalice to do this amazing feat? Oh, I, just because I'm in movies and plays doesn't mean I'm famous or anything. Oh, you sit down, you. <laughs> Yes, uh, one of our callers has a special message 
for you, uh, but I can't make it out. Maybe you can. <laughs> you know how Beaker is. <laughs> Just because I heard the frog sing song. <laughs> Flat Stanley to play games? Oh, please. <laughs> sir, sir. Yes, old. Are the rumors true that your strategy that gave you this brilliant success looks something like this? <laughs> <laughs> just because I bowl differently than everyone else. Oh, just because sir, I. Sir, yeah. sir. Give this to the frog. Um, you, it, it, it appears that you don't actually have fully formed fingers, so how did you achieve such an incredible score? Because I have bowls for hands. <laughs> I'm from the MLB and we're just stuck. How on earth did you get 11 of these? Well, normally you're out after three. <laughs> oh, see, as a professional bowler, I scored a turkey in bowling. Uh, yeah. I scored a perfect game in bowling. perfectly as high brown wealthy people do. So this next game I really enjoy because I'm going to be able to make a perfect scene based on what I believe a perfect scene is, which is true. Um, so this is the next game is the game of buzzers and bells, and I need Andrew Tate Noel, players to the front. <laughs> Now, in the game of buzzers and bells, we're going to see a normal scene, a scene everyone loves, an improv scene, but if there's something I don't like or don't think is perfect, I'm going to make a eh sound. Now, if I make that sound, whatever was just done has to be redone until it is perfect. And all things should be. Um, yeah, that was a quote. That was a quote. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, this is the game of Buzzers and Bells. Let's get a suggestion. Um, let's get one from, let's say, this middle section of the audience. Anyone in this middle section? Um, what is a place that you think is fancy, uh, that you think is fan fancy, but most people don't think is fancy? Cheesecake Factory! 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 Cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> so, this thing of muscles and bells, it's just you know, uh, vineyard players. Are you ready? Yes! I was sent to cut this here vineyard down. Uh, down? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, give 
give me a better uh, tool for cutting this down. I was sent to cut this vineyard. <laughs> 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 I was sent to, pl to plow this baby. <laughs> Why no, we were only meant to do light pruning, man. Where is my, where is my butler, butler, butler? <laughs> my lady, you're really great. Uh, fancy your, fancy your uh, voice. <laughs> <laughs> Also, the action that Kate was doing. <laughs> Osby, how did this degenerate get here? <clears throat> um, different thing you said, Noel, but same thing that Kate did. <laughs> Osby, you fool! <laughs> same thing that Noel did, um, only three more times, and Kate told me that. I only ever do things in three. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid by the hour, and I came to do my job. For you, my lady! Game. I need Brayden, Bryce, Noel, and Logan. Players to the front. Woo! Now, in the game of director, Bryce here is a Hollywood director making a very flashy, fancy movie. Um, but he's just not happy with how his actors are portraying it, so he's going to constantly change it, adjust it based on how he sees fit. And he's going to specifically be changing what genre the scene is in. So let's get some genres you'd see in movie or TV. Ducky Sci-Fi. Monster! Let's, let's, let's go back to middle. Shakespeare. This back half. Here. Shakespeare. 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 Okay, okay, I heard you. I'm going to take. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, a little bell. <laughs> I'm saying this middle section, this back half, and I'm on this side, so I can hear you better. Hey. What are some suggestions from Shakespeare? Western. I like Western. And then also I heard sci-fi, and those go together really well. Oh no, I still know the West. Let's say actually the front half this section. This section front half, what are some genres? Okay, okay, I heard cartoon, but I'm going to slapstick cartoons. Slapstick cartoons. Oh, and then I heard teen genre. Teen genre. But we're in the same 
were selling a CW team drum. Yeah. I'm like, so I'm so I'm so I'm so Okay, now that we have some genres that Bryce can choose from to adjust the scene, now we need a suggestion for the actors. Now, back to this middle section, this middle front section. What is a suggestion for, I have a box here. You're not in the middle section, sir. What's inside that box? I don't know this what I heard, but I heard something that I heard a walkie-talkie. Walkie-talkie is the suggestion. Um, anyway, this is the name of director. Bryce is the director, and the suggestion is walkie-talkie. Players, are you ready? Yes. yes. Come in. Hey, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Who is it? Well, it's... Jeremy. <laughs> oh, was I supposed to go outside? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Ruin it every time. Which channel? Four. Four! <laughs> Dad, she's ruining it! <laughs> Is Channel 4? <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> uh, uh, this is Jeremy. Who are you? I'm Tom. I was out here looking for deer. <laughs> How'd you get this? He's <laughs> uh, Take him! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not a deer, good sir. I'm just a little... I, I'm just a... Please don't hurt me. Take my sister instead. Yeah, that sounds like something a deer would say. <laughs> Amateur hour, you've got to step this up. And you, Reginald, you're a bit pitchy. I know you're not even singing. But... <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And, and fortunately, however, uh, half of our producers have quit. We have lost all of our funding. So we're going to need to turn this thing into an ad to make back our money. <laughs> so <laughs> trust you guys. Let's take it from the top. <laughs> and action! Has this ever happened to you? Try <laughs> <laughs> to communicate with a loved one via your favorite form of communication. <laughs> but these walkie-talkies are just so difficult to you. <laughs> now with our new solution, we call it the only one channel walkie-talkie. <laughs> Will some random guy in the woods show up in the middle of the call with your grandfather, or niece, or estranged lover? <laughs> if you call now at 1 800 777 6778, not only our amazing deal of 1999, but we'll throw in a second one absolutely. <laughs> Great, but apparently kids these days, they don't like ads. They like, they like Star Wars and they like violence. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna combine sci-fi with a slapstick cartoon. They are both at the same time. I want lasers, I want robots, I want prep balls and pies in the face. All, all in one beautiful scene. Okay, I trust you guys. And action! Starla, is the photon communicator working? Rex, I can hear you loud and clear. Wait, Starla, there's another button in here. Pie in face. Oh! oh. <laughs> I love these things. Rex, how many times do I have to tell you not to use the comms when I'm in the next room over? Ugh. <laughs> Here's an anvil for your troubles. <laughs> you and your sense of humor, you. Oh, take me to the. Whoa! <laughs> you pushed me really hard. <laughs> There's some feedback on your comms. Oh, 
Wait, that's not me. Who is this? <laughs> the Morgons! <laughs> no! Now I swear, you filthy humans, I'm about to attack you with every banana peel I have! <laughs> about the foreign market. Yes. I'll see you to 11. This is going to be telling the bell. I hope you've been brushing up on your Spanish. <laughs> and action! Oh, yeah. Hola. Estás <laughs> aquí? No me has llamado por tanto tiempo. Logan and Brandon, players to the front. In the running joke of having Brandon play different characters, we have a very important interview with a very important person. Um, but unfortunately, we spent all of our budgets on these fancy suits and also New Orleans dress. So unfortunately, this interview is in reverse. So. Brayden is going to say the answer to Logan's questions, and it's going to go back and forth, back and forth, in reverse. If you're confused, don't worry, they are as well. <laughs> um, but to start this, let's get a fictional character that Brayden is that Logan is interviewing. So who's a fictional character? <laughs> Johnson from that one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are the Tooth Fairy. This is a reverse interview. Uh, players, are you ready? Yes. Well, that's our show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to the Tooth Fairy for joining us today. Uh, and just remember, until next time, like I always say, one in the tree is two in the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to be worth quite a lot. <laughs> well, uh, I just have one last question before, uh, before, you, before you head out of here. Uh, I, I'd just like to know, uh, what's your opinion on smart passive income? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Thursdays are best. You know, that, that actually reminds me of something my father used to say. Uh, he, he, he used to tell me, uh, well, anyway, no, no, no matter. The next question. Uh, I, I'd just like to ask you, uh, if you were to pick any day of the week that would be the best to rob a bank, which would you pick? <laughs> I'm quite content in my job. Why are you a newscaster? I feel like you could go into so much bigger and better things. <laughs> Can we air that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, interesting answer, sir. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I myself personally, I've, I've, I've had you know quite a few qualifications to get to where I am today. I'm you know at, at the top of my field. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing quite well for myself. Uh, anyway, you, it, it seems. Uh, where? How did you? How did you get your position? How did you? How did you land this job? Oh. You asked me such a loaded question. Well, those people that... <laughs> you know they... <laughs> Man, don't even get me started on the... <laughs> the people will love that watching at home. <laughs> That's a good one. 
Now, uh, Mr. Tooth Fairy, uh, I, I, I know the folks around at home. They're, they're really just waiting to hear your opinion on this. You know, in the upcoming election, who do you think you're going to vote for? Why is such a thing like that to me? Now, Tooth Fairy, we all know, just to get started, you're obviously the least favorite of all of them, you know, that's quality. I, I think I don't stand alone in that opinion. I think that that's a pretty safe take to have. Well, thanks for having me here today, and I just want to say, um, my net worth is quite high, thanks to all of you. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, our guest that we have to hear is, today is, is such a special one. He's someone that some of you may not have ever seen, may not have ever even believed in, but here he is <laughs> in the flesh. And as you know, the Tooth Fairy, he doesn't do it for the money. He doesn't do it for the I cut him off before he could put his hands in Logan's mouth. <laughs> but if it's something you really want to do, I guess not. I guess not. I think we're all disappointed. Uh, for this next game, I'm going to need all my players to the front. <laughs> two of them to leave. Uh, now, this next game is called Lost in Translation. Now, how this game is going to work is we're going to see a scene. Now, in this scene, two people can be doing a scene. Which two are doing the scenes? They're starting. Um, they're going to be doing a scene, and Brandon and Noel are going to be watching. Now, because we're very highbrow and fancy, we speak languages none of you probably know. One such is known as gibberish. So after we see this first scene, we're going to see the scene one more time in the uh, elevated language of gibberish by Brandon and Noel. The two players on the left outside will then watch the scene and then recreate it for a third time. Again, if you're confused, don't worry, so are we. Um, but to start off this game, we need a suggestion. So for this scene, I'm going to go to this side of the audience to show you guys some of the love. Um, what, for this scene, what is a weird place to find carpet squares? Uh, Walmart bathroom! Uh, hey, Walmart bathroom! What? I did hear it. I'm so confused. This is the game of Austin. Did you just say the suggestion in the microphone? Hey, that's what we call a red herring, as Brayden said. <laughs> Back to this side. What's another uh, place that... What's just a location? Eagle location. Eagle location. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm the house. I'm not here. Turn on the microphone. Just say it, please. The suggestion is Disneyland. Disneyland is the suggestion. Players, are you ready? Yes. It's interesting that you. Oh, boy. Another brutal day is Nikki. Oh, those kids out there. You think it's easy for you? I gotta be Cinderella. <laughs> I got an idea. If we break into the castle, we can rob Disney's Disney. vault. <laughs> Take the treasures and make a living for ourselves out, out in the wild world. I'm feeling spontaneous. Let's do it now. <laughs> Charges! <laughs> The platinum copy, the golden copy, the silver copy. The oh, online my digital edition. Put <laughs> in the bag. Wait, is that the head of <laughs> Disney himself? <laughs> Good job. Good job. 
For copyright reasons, we can't continue that scene. Um, let's call another two players with a call of, oh no, one, two, three. Oh no! <laughs> this is the game of Lost in Translation. Players, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Understand what that said, but our two players here, they know exactly what was said. So we're in the same scene as the first scene. So the players are you ready? Yes. yes. <laughs> Dude, I'm so tired of being on the moon what? wearing this. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm, I'm fine. Exactly. Like, you're not. Oh my gosh. Um, here, do you have like the backup? Story. They said there's air buried beneath the <laughs> 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 box. Hey, planet, planet, the box! <laughs> Wait, it doesn't make a sound. There's no air. <laughs> Announcements! Yeah! Uh, once again, I just have to thank you guys so much for coming. Like, look at this big crowd. This is amazing. This is amazing. We <laughs> hope to see every single one of you that can make it in our February show, February 9th, which is going to be the Friend Zone show. Um, you can tell I was. Um, other things, uh, we are going to um, we meet every Thursday in this room at 7. If you are a BYU student, married to a BYU student, or BYU faculty, you are allowed to come, participate, learn how to do improv, and nothing come and be. Uh, really quick, out of the people up on stage, how many of you have done improv before joining the club? So not many of us. And you see, we're like, passable. <laughs> so you guys can do this, maybe. Um, and also, who here in the audience is actually a member of the club? Raise your hand. A great people crowd is so you can join us on Thursday. It's really hey, hey, fun. Hey. Um, I think that's our, those are our only two announcements for now. Oh, one more announcement. We have a lot of people here. So if you are not following us on Instagram, pull out your phone right now. Open Instagram and go to lol.byu and you will find our Instagram. Now, I don't want to brag, but we have the most followers of any club on campus. I'm pretty sure it's true. <laughs> so help make that grow larger. We also post reels, funny moments from the shows, and sometimes other fun surprises. So follow us. 
Um, that's our last announcement. We're on to our last game of the show, which is honestly one of my favorite games we get to play, and we have some amazing players playing it, as well as people that are going to be sitting and watching as well, because we're all amazing. Um, this is a game of Oscar-winning moment. And I need Brayden, Bryce, and Andrew, players, for the fun. Now, we saw a pretty incredible musical with uh, Christina Johnston, but now we're going to see an incredible Oscar-winning film, or at least an oscar baby film. Um, they're going to be seen, and in various moments, they're going to go and give a monologue, a soliloquy, an eulogy, all those fancy words. Yeah. Philosophy, yeah, sure, that too. Um, and it's going to be the, the Oscar bait for this movie. So let's come up with a title for a movie that is an Oscar baby sounding movie that doesn't actually exist. Let's get it from anyone in this whole back half of the Rumors audience. of my demise. The Factory Boys. Ooh, I like, I'm gonna take out the the, like in Facebook. I'm gonna call, just call this Factory Boys. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Oscar baby movie of Ooh. Factory Boys. Players, are you ready? The boys in the boat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Jimmy, sometimes I wonder if there's more to life. <laughs> I mean, I'm having a good time stacking these here cans. And you're on the machine, I think we've got what I've made. Oscar winning moment, Brayden. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think that maybe there's more than just <laughs> corned beef? <laughs> but alas, this is the way of this life. Stacking corned beef days and days over. Unless, what is that? A call out in the wild for me. Oh, I'm gonna live my life. I'm gonna leave the factory. Oh, the world is out there. A place I wanna be. I wanna be a, a smoking hot dame. <laughs> Get up, you're gonna be out in the streets. Not the streets, not again. <laughs> I need this job. Don't mess this up for me. Oscar winning moment, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the streets like I do. <laughs> when you're left on a doorstep, there isn't really a doorstep, but just a curb that someone thought was a doorstep. <laughs> you learn how to take care of yourself. You learn to appreciate the little things in life. You learn to appreciate every single dime that you receive from this awful, awful job. <laughs> but I'm not going back. One day, I'll save enough money. <laughs> I'll find my way. A better life. A new life. Maybe even a wife! <laughs> that one's taken! <laughs> moment, uh, Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> I 
whoever thinks of the poor, poor millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> the poor millionaires and the factory boys. <laughs> Who can't even afford to drink about the wild because I'm too busy making loads and loads of money. <laughs> Wealth is such a curse. <laughs> Smoky flavor, corned beef and cabbage, and cream corn. <laughs> the people love it. How can I leave? Well, they just want to keep giving me money for my food. <laughs> I don't even want a wife, I just want more cream corn. <laughs> <laughs> Three dollars. Forty-two cents. This is for you. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's worth two cans of crimped corn <laughs> for free. <laughs> yeah, honey, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Factory voice? <laughs>